Today, I just thought we'd take a quick look at this Tilt battery bank. Model is WA-15TPP5200. And it's just a 5 volt, 1 amp output, 5200 milliamp hour, or 19.24 watt hour. And this is a battery bank that I had got with a phone from Costco several years ago. And it was actually a good little power bank you could hit the button twice and it would actually show the flashlight this one however has been charging now for hours and will not come off the the very first bar blinking so no flashlight no own a usb meter doesn't even work Had a little bit of a load to it, even with no load. So I'm assuming we got a bad lithium cell in here. When I first got this, I thought maybe it had 18650 cells, but I believe it is too narrow to have 18650 cells. That's all I got to compare to right now, but I believe that is too narrow for that. Unless it's packed very tight. So I'm gonna attempt to see if we can um, get into this. And it's not going to be easy, but it is no good to us the way it is. So, well, back here after working with this for a minute or so, it's not, it's not looking very promising. So I'm just going to go through. And sometimes I like to take a, a razor blade with a depth set, so I can't go too deep, and just go around. And by the way, I cleaned up this battery pack, but it looks dirty because the, the rubber's gotten a little tacky in the, uh, the paper towel fiber actually stuck to it. I'm just going to go around a few times with the actual razor blade to a set depth and put back and see if it's any easier to open up. I think the case is open. Now we're just fighting some double-sided tape. And my first suspicions were right that it was 18650. At the first of the video when I thought maybe that was wrong, it looked almost too small for that. Unless they're jammed in there, they were for sure jammed in there. And going that direction, it broke out the... Uh, the screws were tightened down there, unfortunately. It would have been best to try to separate the batteries from the back up. If that tape would have separated first, it would have been nice. So note to you if you're taking yours apart as well. Three point four. That's actually not terrible. So instead of being in series, these are these are just simply in parallel. So 4.2 volts max. So we definitely have a boost regulator here, boosting up to five volts as well as a charging circuit. So I'm just gonna bring over my power supply and see if these will charge up with just a safe constant current across the two cells here, positive and our negative, respectively. I'm gonna let this charge at about two amps for a little while, hopefully one amp per cell. I wanna see here if one gets warmer than the other, like we might have an issue with the cell. Since they're in parallel, it's hard to tell. But while I'm waiting on that, I will mention how these clips look. If you decided to try on yours prying, 
as I tried to pry, I could tell it was just going to eat it up. The way these are designed with the catch, it will be extremely hard. Even when you pull this back, it's not um, unleashing that catch very well. So that's what the case looks like with a lot of catches around. That's why sometimes I just set the depth on my, my razor and go around. That way you're cutting completely through with no chance of getting into the sails. Usually, if you're careful, I have a little bit of a, a broke tip there so it just stays right on. If you can see that on camera, it just cuts straight through the plastic and uh, at that angle, nowhere else. Just a few passes and it starts breaking through. And then the prying don't tear it up so bad and you can still glue this back if you really, really wanted to. It really don't look that bad. It don't look great, but it's not like, not like prying on it all over. So back now after giving this a few minutes to charge up, neither cell seems to be really warmer than the other. And if we remove these leaves and check our voltage here. All right, so 3.544, if I plug this up, yeah, it's not, it's not charging. We're slowly going down instead of charging, so. This should be our boost circuit to give us our five volts out. We got the inductor here and the chip. So I realized that the input to this board was taking down my power supply. So the little typical one amp, even the two amp brick was getting taken down. So now I'm powering this up with my power supply and limiting it four amps in this 1.8 volts. Of course, I got some drop across this little cheap wire. It's not really made to handle four amps, but um, we definitely got something going on on this board. We're just gonna take the camera here and see with the FLIR camera and just see if we can see exactly what's causing the issue here. So the batteries actually have nothing to do with this failure, which is surprising, but I'm going to take time to take the batteries off of the board here. Just going to desolder this connection really quickly. And we're just going to verify that. And yeah, still over four amps, 1.9 volts. So definitely just a board issue for sure. And back now with that pack removed and my good pack, this is like a, a 10 amp hour, 4.2 volt pack that I've just built. It's not really for this, this is one I have. Um, for testing here, I got it hooked up with my uh, proven leads, you could say. With 4.2 volts going to board, it does work. Light comes on with two presses and we're showing three quarters full. Probably have some resistance on this lead, but the fuel gauge is actually working or the battery charge level is working. So we just have trouble with the charging part. This chip directly behind the LED is a 4057A. And if I look up that number, MP4057A shows up as a single chip solution for smart LED. So this must be the LED driver. So that part is probably okay, even though it's really close to the charging port here. So we have a XB8089A. And this is a one cell lithium ion battery protection IC. And then we have another little small eight pin package. It has a OL equals H2Q. I can't find nothing on the OL H2Q. And of course, this should be our microcontroller, the Hotec HT66 F018. Let's see what this little power cord plugged in to the charging port. Just how low I ohm are reading this is because it's probably pretty low. Yeah, 1.2 ohms. 
That's really, really a dead short with these leaves. Pull a little protector off the LED. Let's look a little closer. So this is so weird. I know I have a short on the input and I have looked under the microscope and looked the best I could with a magnifying glass. I don't see any reason why the charging port is shorter or faulty. But as soon as I plug this in, I go to one volt. And the reason it's one volt is because this voltage drop of this wire, honestly, this is your load. We're shorting right here and I can't even make it open up or break. It is definitely four amps over eight watts. So this, this connector is heating up as we can see on the, the thermal image and we can see that it's, it's heating up right here. There's nothing on that there but our ground plane and definitely warming up again. And I'm, I'm gonna disconnect the power and just use this for testing in ohms continuity mode We're clear. And when we plug this up, dead short. You might be thinking this got heated up, it could have failed. Fair enough. Take another open ended cable. <laughs> so we definitely got a problem on the charging port, even though it was no obvious issues looking at it. So let's. Let's take off that charging port and check it. So with that removed and the power supply over to limit current, and of course the pin out on these is, pin one is gonna be positive and pin five is gonna be our negative. That's all this board was using. And it was plugged in like so, pin one being on my left here. Five volts straight in and almost no current and we got a blinking light on the other side if you can see that on camera hopefully you can see that light up on the other side there so all I need is another jack I just thought it was interesting because I could not find anything visually obvious with this port I mean the pin one connection definitely was bent but even with the screwdriver a very tiny screwdriver. I did on the microscope there try to make sure it wasn't touching it was separated but maybe it's been over enough where it wasn't lining up properly but anyway we have verified it was definitely the port. I don't have one but I'll decide if I want to actually take it off a donor or, or order one to replace it. We can also improvise as well. here and there we go hope you found this video interesting today looking inside of this usb power bank and what it takes to uh to troubleshoot it and the issues we have with it i definitely expect it to be either a cell issue or board issue and the charging port was not on my high probability list but nevertheless sometimes that's how it goes that was it i'm also on odyssey now so Please go over there and check the channel out as well. And we appreciate all the support. As always, I'll have some links down in the video description of some items that I find helpful on my bench. And if you find those helpful and would like to click on those links and check out those tooling items yourself, they are affiliate links. It does support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.